everyone, and welcome to God's Plan, Your Part, a podcast where our goal is to read the entire Bible in a year, seeking to understand God's plan of redemption while discovering daily and practically your part in it. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are looking at Ezekiel 38 to 39. Some of you might be really excited uh, to finally arrive at a conclusion of what we're going to be talking about, but actually we have more questions than answers, unfortunately. So we are talking today about 38 and 39 that bring up a mysterious character of a mysterious land. Okay, so we have this individual named Gog from the land of Magog. And what's interesting about this enemy that is being prophesied against because they come up against the people of Israel is that they are like there there's a lot of speculation about them like there's not a, like an agreed upon answer of who these people are where they're coming from it's very it's very odd actually we're literally talking like hundreds if not thousands of years of jewish and christian history uh trying to ascertain who these people are who this leader is what the significance is because here in ezekiel really the only hard indicator that we get is that they approach from the north, um, which is not really that hard of an indicator because they may have gathered in the north or something. Yeah. Um, and even in Revelation, because this shows uh, Gog and Magog show up again in Revelation chapter 20, uh, they approach from the north, but we don't know anything about them. So there's been a lot of conversation about who they are. Uh, that conversation has shifted and changed as political roles of nations and leaders have changed. And so depending on the period of time that you're reading, like if you're reading a commentary from the Middle Ages, uh, they will think something different about Gog and Magog because they will be interpreting it through the lens of what was happening at that time. Mm. Just like if you read commentaries about um, Gog and Magog from today, they will most likely be interpreted through the political sphere sphere, sphere uh, of today. <laughs> Uh, which makes sense. People try to understand these passages and want to figure out who these leaders and nations are. And so you see them through the lens of the time you're living in. Uh, the problem is pretty much everyone's been wrong so far. Mm -hmm. uh, you were saying, though, that there's another reference to them much later on in the book of Revelation. I believe it was chapter, was it 28? Uh, Revelation 20, 28. Oh, 28. Uh, 20, so I'll eight. just <laughs> go, go there and... Uh, tell you about it here in a second well and while ryan's looking for that our commentary kind of references to that that gog and magog are the names of the nations that are led by satan to attack jerusalem at the end of the thousand years which is that romans or excuse me not romans revelations uh so we take one confusing thing from ezekiel about who gog and magog are and then we combine it with another confusing thing about armies in revelation from the thousand years is it uh pre-thousand years post-thousand years middle thousand years maybe not a thousand years i don't know uh but you just whip up this big confusing thing but revelation 20 uh, verse 7 then 8. And when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, so gather them together for battle. Their number is like the sand of the sea, and they marched up over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet were, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Ugh. <laughs> Sounds awful. So really the only thing um, that we know about Gog and Magog is that they are guaranteed to be destroyed because they are destroyed in Ezekiel. Uh, there's just like dead bodies littered all across Israel because God has destroyed them. They are utterly destroyed in Revelation in the same manner. Uh, and God does it to bring honor and glory to himself. Apparently the other nations look at Gog and Magog and say, whoa, God is real. God is powerful. Uh, we need to do something about the fact that we cannot deny God any longer. So then I guess we have chapter 39 is a continuation of this prophecy against Gog and Magog. And then we kind of land in a place of, again, God restoring Israel. Yeah, one of the really cool things about this restoration, we've been hearing about this restoration a lot. But one of the really cool things is chapter 39, verse 29 and I will not hide my face any more from them, talking about Israel, when I pour out my spirit upon the house of Israel, declares the Lord God. So even in Ezekiel, 
and we've had a couple Old Testament references to the Spirit coming, here in Ezekiel, we hear that God is going to pour out his Spirit on his people, and you get the idea uh, that there's going to be a lot more people than usual experiencing the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit in their own lives, in their own nations. And I, I believe we see that come to pass in uh, Acts, the chapter, Acts chapter 2, uh, where Peter sees it happening and declares it to everybody there that's present and starts quoting Joel, uh, which we'll be in in a couple of days. Okay, so for a your part here, um, this might be a little bit of a reach, but it is like just... <laughs> Jenny was just saying about how old this gets because we're saying the same thing over and over. We really try hard not to say the same thing over and over. So for the your part, I think I want to give you like a little bit of a caution uh, when it comes to interpreting prophecies that have like literally no bearings. Uh, because there are people out there that will tell you they know exactly who Gog and Magog are. And, you know, there's a chance. There's always a chance that they might know. They might have interpreted this correctly. But there's always also a big chance they might not know. And so I have heard before uh, different things about Gog and Magog, and usually they are politically motivated things to help us be against other nations or help us be more cautious about certain nations. Uh, I just want to give you a little bit of caution in that we don't know who these nations are, but we do know who God is. Mm -hmm. So when you deal with a prophecy that you're not quite sure what it means, first, compare it to wherever it pops up in other scriptures, which is what we did uh, right now, looking at Revelation. See if you can get any more context about who this might be. Uh, second, remember that most of the people who rejected Jesus were very confident that they knew exactly what the prophecies about the Messiah meant, and they were 110% wrong. And so there were people that knew what God's word meant about the future, and they were wrong, so they rejected the Son of God. So we don't want to be so rigid uh, with these kind of like gray area prophecies uh, that we end up deaf to what God is trying to speak to us. And then finally, um, remember that while prophecy can be a little bit confusing, we do know who God is. Mm -hmm. And so the important thing about Gog and Magog is that they seem very scary. They're like a giant, enormous, dangerous army but God destroys them on his own by himself for his glory. So don't get in the weeds uh, with prophecy that you, you know, it, it's not bad to study the Bible. We're all about studying the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, it's not bad to dig into these things, but just be cautious about trying to interpret prophecies that have been really difficult to understand for 2000 years. Um, <laughs> in and, an and maybe instead of falling down in the rabbit hole, uh, in a way where it just consumes your thoughts, maybe temper that with the idea of who God is, what his character is like, and what that prophecy is meant to show us. Like really what Ezekiel is showing the people is that God will be triumphant. And even though things are dark and scary and threatening, God is the one that has the power and God will defend us and God will deliver us. So when that happens with Gog and Magog, and it will, because it is written in the word and the word will be true, uh, just like all these other passages in Ezekiel that became true much, much, much later, uh, this one will become true as well. We don't know exactly how that would go, but we know exactly who our God is. And so we can have faith in that. We can have trust in that. We can have hope in that. And that is my encouragement to you because we will bump up against some other prophecies that we're not quite sure what they are, but we do know who God is. So just hold strongly to that. Don't be afraid to study. Don't be afraid to read and listen a lot. Uh, but know who God is and have faith in him. So we'll be back in tomorrow. We'll see you then. Thanks so much for listening to God's Plan, Your Part. If anything stuck out to you, if you have any questions, or if you'd like to receive a Bible, you can email us at godsplanyourpart at gmail.com. Also, if you're enjoying the podcast, please consider supporting us through the link in our description. We love that you're on this journey with us, and we hope you have a great day. See you tomorrow.